Motor Trends, bringing you a look at the automotive industry through the eyes of its leaders. In this edition, focus on transport, brought to you by MAN Truck and Bus South Africa, C-Track and Engine. Welcome to Track Test 2013. Regular viewers will recall that last year we focused on extra heavy commercial vehicles. You know those massive 18 wheelers that you see trundling all over our highways? Well this year we're focusing, if you'll excuse the pun, on another equally important segment of the market, namely 4x2 freight carriers with a legal carrying capacity of 7 tons and over. In simple terms, these are smaller trucks you will often see driving around cities. They are loaded and offloaded frequently and they run over shorter distances. Because they are often in cities, they are subjected to a lot of stop-start traffic and that's precisely what we're trying to emulate here at Truck Test 2013. Based this year at the Geotech testing facility outside Pretoria, the three-day event was divided into two parts. A challenging course around the facility's concrete ride and handling track and two straightforward runs to swap Ruchens and back. We have 14 trucks represented here at Truck Test 2013 and every single major manufacturer is here too. It's like the Oscars of the transport industry, but instead of searching for Sugar Man, we're searching for the very best trucks that are trawling our roads. Nine different manufacturers, 28 drivers and co-drivers, six months of preparation, and three days of over 550 kilometers of testing per truck. Truck Test 2013 was a massive undertaking. The truck manufacturers enter individual models and there is no limit to the number of trucks that they can enter as long as they are stock standard and they compete within the sector being tested. This year that comprised 8 tonners with a V rating varying from 13,500 kilograms to 16,500 kilograms. The manufacturers are invited to enter vehicles that fit the bill and this year relative newcomer FAW went all out entering four vehicles in total. We have a particularly successful vehicle in both of these, in the 13180 and in the 16240. And for us, it's going to be very good to see how they match up and what we can get out from audited figures independently, objectively, which we can hold out to clients. And from this base, we can improve. How important are these results to you? They're very important to us, particularly because we don't have the reference points which other manufacturers might have had. And for us, uh, in our local condition, it's important to know what they're doing, how they're doing it, and um, how we can progress and do better. We're kicking off Truck Test 2013 here at Engine in Harder Beersport. One of the factors that we will be measuring is, of course, fuel consumption, which is very important to transport operators. It can represent 40 to 50 percent of operating costs. So we're topping up with diesel to make sure that each and every entrance starts with a full tank. Each of the gleaming entrants made their appearance, and slowly but surely, the entourage of metal took shape. In addition to the FAWs, we had a Mercedes Otago, an Iveco, two Isuzus, a Hino 500 series, a UD95A from UD Trucks, and a Photon. As a major player in the market, MAN also had a very strong presence with three entries. We've entered our um, 15220, our CLA, um, which is our MAN um, truck made in India and assembled in South Africa. Um, it's at a, at a really high level at the moment and we, we very, we're very excited about the, the prospects on, on that particular vehicle. Then we have the 1750 VW Constellation and the 15180 VW Constellation. And those Volkswagens come from Brazil? The Volkswagens are from Brazil, correct, yeah. We import them as CKD and we assemble in Pinetown at our MAN factory, our main factory. With the three vehicles that we have here at the moment, what we looked at was the 15180 basically covers the seven ton segment, so it's more volume. Um, we then have this, the 15220, which is essentially an eight tonner, 
um, very well priced, um, performance is good, as I said, good quality. And then we've also put in the 17250, uh, where we have options of different wheelbases, which basically gives the customer the option of an eight tonner and more. How yeah. competitive is the segment of the market? It's a very competitive segment, um, and to be quite honest, we've focused traditionally more in the extra heavy segment. So it's a, it's a segment that we see a lot of potential in, um, mainly with our Japanese um, competitors and colleagues, and um, also the Indians and the Chinese. So the Asian market is very, very um, competitive in that particular um, segment. As with Truck Test 2012, each entrant had to supply a co-driver who would ride along in another entrant's vehicle, recording trip times and ensuring that the drivers kept to the rules of the test and, importantly, the road. Following a quick briefing by event coordinator Fritz Halberg from Halberg Transport Management, the entourage set off for Geratech, where most of day one's activities would take place. Each vehicle was fitted with a mobile tracking unit to help with the stats, with C-Track on board once again as a major supplier. The information is, is very important for them with regards to uh, vehicle, real vehicle speed information, the distance travelling, direction travelling, as well as start using driver behaviour to reduce certain life cycle costs on vehicles. So what exactly are you measuring with the seat track units on this, uh, during truck test? On this specific test we are we, um, measuring speed, we are measuring direction, odometer, as well as certain low level driver behaviour information. Such as? Such as um, staying in, in a gear for a specific time, looking at the way the guys are operating the vehicle with regards to speed, over speeding, over revving, certain harsh braking um, conditions. Okay, what sort of speeds are they allowed to travel? Uh, they are allowed to travel 80, 80, between 80 and 85 kilometres an hour. And what happens if they go over the speed limit? We will measure it, uh, we will measure it as an exception, which will at the end of the truck test be shown as an exception report with the amount of times that a specific driver has exceeded the speed during the test. And then the driver will be penalised accordingly? The driver will be penalised accordingly with the amount of times that he has over speed. And why the great emphasis on speed? With regards to speed has got a, a serious impact with regards to vehicle cost, with regards to CO2 emissions as well as fuel consumption and truck maintenance on vehicles. Next up is the weighing of trucks here at the Weighbridge at Juratech. Obviously a lighter truck will fare considerably better than a heavier one, both on the ride and handling circuit and out on the road as well. And we're checking to see that the vehicles are A, firstly fully loaded and B, that they're legally loaded too. They are all very similar in spec, ranging from a V rating of 13.5 tonnes mm -hmm. all the way up to 16.5 tonnes and uh, the payloads ranging from about six and a half tons to eight tons. With the weights equalized, it was off to the track for the real fun, which began before the trucks even hit the start line. Everyone was bundled onto the back of a sarmel and driven around the course to get a feel for the steep ascents and descents, many corners and preset stops. These trucks encounter a lot of stop-start traffic which means we could have run this test in a city centre, which is their typical operating conditions. However, we've got things to contend with there, like pedestrians, fellow road users, traffic, roadworks, etc., etc. So instead, we've come to the Ride and Handlick circuit at Juratech, and we're simulating those conditions. The vehicles were sent around in groups of four and five at two-minute intervals. The drivers attacking the course with all the excitement and confidence of a special stage rally driver. But of course, the handling track wasn't actually about having fun. The route, which included six compulsory stops along the undulating track, was designed to really put fuel consumption to the test. Manufacturers themselves work consistently on improving their technologies, um, making demands of the oil industry, who are constantly obviously having to, to meet their requirements. But as a partnership worldwide, between uh, oil companies and, and the vehicle manufacturers, there's a constant move towards improving fuel efficiencies, also obviously reducing emissions. And what has engine done in this regard? Well, we're fortunate in that we've got our parent company, Petronas from Malaysia, who is a global player. And uh, 
they really have been hugely supportive of Engine in terms of, of introducing new technologies and just recently within the last three months in fact uh, our dynamic diesel has uh, been upgraded with a probably uh, world-class now or world-leading uh, additive pack and we're very proud of that and again our customers have come back to us with very positive responses you know in terms of, of, of performance of that product. Mm. There's so many factors that come into play when it comes to fuel consumption aren't there because you've got your fuel then you've got the truck you've got the trailer you've got the driver how important is the driver when it comes to fuel consumption? The driver certainly plays a huge huge part and I think we know that from our own private driving experiences you're a bit heavy with your foot or you know you get caught in stop start traffic and you know what happens to your consumption so um, the drivers themselves in terms of the routes that they pick, in terms of the manner in which they, they uh, put their, their, their foot down, it's all very important and um, it, it does play a big part, you're right. Blackie, we've just finished the ride and handling track and you were going around there like a Formula One driver. Is there something in this Volkswagen that you want to tell me about? I don't think it's uh, the vehicle alone. It's mainly because I've got knowledge of the track driven here before yeah. with Interlinks full payload and uh, knowing the product itself. It's, it makes a big big difference. Mainly what makes a big difference is the way your vehicle is loaded. That can interfere with the whole system. What is this in the back here? Um, it's containers filled with stone. And uh, the reason why we fill it with stone is to get rid of the sloshing, the vehicle move movement. Because another option is water. Yeah, another option is water, but if we make use of water, it's one cubic meter container, so it will be equal to a thousand liters. And that's equal to roughly one ton. Okay. But by making use of stones, uh, we can get up to about a thousand six hundred kilograms per one cubic meter. And what is your weight, your load here? Load is uh, eight and a half tons total. If your vehicle is, la vehicle is laid wrong, say to one side of the vehicle or to the front of the vehicle, your steering might not be that good. Um, your handling around corners might be interfered with, definitely. Johanna, I could see you were working really hard out there today. You wanted to do well, didn't you? Definitely, yeah. This baby is the lightest on fuel. Oh, you reckon, eh? Definitely. For the first time that I've had the VW on the track, um, doing the uphills, downhills, I think I've done great. After the break, we'll see how the trucks perform out on the road, both laden and unladen, on the way to Swatruchens. So stay with us. After the break, more motor trends from Focus on Transport. Welcome back to Motor Trends, Focus on Transport. Welcome to the second day of Track Test 2013. Yesterday saw our 14 entrants heading to Juratech, where we put them through their paces on the ride and handling track. The drivers really had to work hard, that's an arduous track. And today they won't be able to park off either, because they're heading off to Swart Ruchens on the highway with a full load. It's about a 250 kilometer round trip, and given the fact that the trucks cannot go faster than 85 kilometers an hour max, it should take about four hours or so. You might wonder, why Swart Ruchens? Well, the aim of this trip from Engen Hardebeerspoort to Engen Swart Ruchens and back was to simulate the intercity routes that the eight tonners embark on so frequently. Remembering that Truck Test 2013 is looking mainly at fuel consumption and productivity, it's important to note that there are plenty of checks and balances in place to ensure the accuracy of the results. We always have two uh, parties involved in verifying the results. If we look at the fuel consumption or the fuel measurements, we from Halberg Transport Management uh, are measuring the Baza Phillips together with engine who are supplying the fuel and sponsoring the fuel. So it's verified by two parties at the Baza, plus the driver gets involved to ensure that the, the level to which we fill up is always the same. And then in terms of the uh, average speed calculation and the trip times, uh, again we measuring it, um, we recording start and end times, and we're using the C-Track uh, tracking devices and they will also be able to give us accurate start and end times and they will also be able to tell us if vehicles had unnecessary delays along the route for which we can compensate them. The 
vehicles were permitted to go up to 85 kilometers an hour, with a one-minute penalty being added to their drive time every time a truck went over this limit. You know what they say about cars, the most important nut is the one behind the wheel. Well, exactly the same is true with trucks, even more so, because a truck driver can really influence the performance of a vehicle. Bearing this in mind, the vehicle manufacturers have handpicked the very best truck drivers to get behind the wheel of their entrance. The guys behind me are the creme de la creme of truck drivers. I think we're very fortunate um, and privileged to have the, the, driver, the drivers we have in our driver training um, section of our business and um, yes drivers are very important they can make or break any brand or any any model any truck and at the end of the day I, I think it's a combination of for these types of tests obviously having a good driver but trying to to simulate the the real situation as close as possible and also it takes us a step further towards making sure that our vehicles are as driver friendly as possible um, going forward I think that's the important factor It's fairly peaceful and tranquil out here on the N4 today, but that really belies what the drivers are up to. They are focusing furiously, trying to extract maximum productivity from their vehicles. So that means looking up ahead and planning the route, avoiding sudden acceleration and braking. They want to be the best out there. Is it hard work driving a truck? Yes, it's hard work driving because everything is up after the driver. I have mm -hmm. to look for the, the same cars are moving, the load, my truck, also my temperature, all the things after the drive. How difficult is it to drive one of these trucks? What skills do you need? Definitely respect um, for your vehicle and other road users and to look far ahead. Your planning, that's, that's the biggest thing and then to know the product. If you don't know what to do with the product, your uh, planning far ahead is not going to assist or help you at all. We're back at Engen and Harder Beer Sport where the trucks are being refueled before returning to their home depots for offloading. And there's a huge amount of excitement over here because all the guys want to know exactly how much fuel they've consumed today. And of course they're all very, very competitive. Johanna saw you were working your butt off today out there. You were determined to do well, correct? Yes, definitely. What was your goal? Goal was to get a fuel consumption of less than 20 litres per hundred guys. And? And we managed to get 19.8 uh, litres to 100, so I'm very happy. For this year's test, apart from selecting their drivers, manufacturers were also allowed to enter vehicles with aerodynamic kits on them to see how these made a difference to performance. The only condition was that they also enter an identical truck without the kit to use as a reference vehicle. You've been running around here with your measuring tape. What are you measuring and why? Yeah, we're measuring specifically body length. Gives the operators a good idea of what volume uh, utilization is available on a certain chassis, perhaps with a certain wheelbase. But also, importantly, we're measuring width and height. And width and height gives us the frontal area of the vehicles. And in this case, we are uh, simulating and testing the difference between aerodynamically styled vehicles and standard vehicles without uh, advanced aerodynamics. And that's why the width and the height is very important. And uh, we've got some results which are showing us already that there are improvements uh, to, to be ahead if you apply advanced aerodynamics to your design. We're nearing the end of Truck Test 2013 and everyone is wondering how the trucks will perform. The results can influence buying decisions by operators, so we're talking massive financial investments. Some of these vehicles, even in the 8 tonner category, are well over a million rand. Certainly last year's vehicles were, were almost double that in, in, in uh, price. So for the operator to go out and spend that sort of money, he needs to make sure that he's spending it correctly. So for us to be able to assist in that, it's a great pleasure. 
When customers are buying a truck in this segment of the market, what are the most important things for them? Well, I think um, firstly reliability, um, then of course um, the, the productivity factor. So you need to look at the body combination um, in relation to the application that they're purchasing the vehicle for. And um, fuel efficiency is important as well. And, and most importantly, I think, is the backup. Well, it's day three of Truck Test 2013, and we're going to repeat what we did yesterday. We're going to go out to Swartwichens. But as you can see behind me, there's one big difference. There ain't no load in the back of this truck. This is a very significant part of the test because sadly, these trucks do run empty a lot of the time. Of course, transport operators don't like that because an empty load means no billable hours. And trucking is, after all, about making money. That will give them a perspective of uh, what the cost will be of running a vehicle unladed. Will it make a huge difference to the fuel consumption? I'd say yes, definitely. Percentage-wise? Percentage-wise, uh, you're looking at, if you're looking at uh, uh, kilometers per litre, you can save up to a three or four kilometers per hundred. So, so it's going to be very can, interesting to see how you perform. It can be a very, very great difference. Mm. It's one of the disadvantages, if you like, of the eight-tonner market because of exactly what you say. It's stop-start driving, it's a lot of short-haul deliveries, that sort of thing. So again, the Fuel consumption is critical to understand and I think that this year's test and the way in which it's been structured where there is some open road driving but there's been a lot of stop-start driving as part of the test I think is absolutely vital to give a fair indication of uh, the fuel consumption. With the price of fuel rocketing as it, as it has done over the past couple of years and all likelihood is it will continue to do so, all these operators are looking to get a vehicle that is specifically suited to the particular application that they require. It's a market of around 8,000 trucks per year. Um, for us it's a very important market because it's a market segment that until we brought the, the likes of our VW Constellation in the CLA, we weren't a, a very big player in, in the particular market. So although the market is flat, we see a big opportunity for ourselves with the right products to actually grow our, our market share within the, the particular segment. I see quite a few of your trucks are branded with the Trucks to Go concept yes. that you're going to be launching shortly. What's yes. that all about? In this typical type of market with freight carriers, um, sometimes one of the biggest frustrations for customers is once they get a particular contract, they need a truck. Now with a truck tractor, it's very easy. You supply the vehicle in a short space of time, they have a trailer and off they go. With, with this particular segment, you need to have a body built. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the whole concept of trucks to go is being able to offer our customer a truck off the shelf, bodied, complete, um, all ready to roll. And the concept was launched in Germany about a year ago, and uh, we followed through in South Africa now. And, and it's working exceptionally well. The same could of course be said of Truck Test 2013. As the event drew to a close, the consensus among participants was that the organisers did a superb job. I think uh, there might be some people sitting up and taking notice. And if that's the case, I think we would have succeeded. And we must certainly going to try and attempt to continue succeeding. Well, that's it, folks, for Truck Test 2013. All 14 vehicles have performed magnificently, proving that we really do have world-class trucks on our road. Now it's over to our team of technical experts and they'll be analysing all the data that we've gathered over the past three days. The full results will be available on our website www.focusontransport.co.za As a short teaser, here are some of the highlights of the test results. FAW's 13180FL did very well to achieve a payload productivity of 10. Isuzu's FSR 800 AMT sipped a mere 19.7 litres of fuel per 100 kilometres. The Photon recorded an actual average speed of 61 kilometres per hour. The Mercedes-Benz Atego's payload productivity of 11.4 was very good. The UD Truck's UD95A used just 22.1 litres of fuel per 100 kilometres. The Iveco Euro Cargo recorded an actual speed of 62.7 km per hour average. Hino's 500 series achieved a credible payload productivity factor of 10.4.
while MAN's CLA15220BB required just 24.1 litres of fuel per 100 kilometres. And finally, VW's Constellation 17250 achieved an actual speed of 64.2 km per hour average. Remember, the full results can be found at www.focusontransport.co.za. Also, don't miss our roundup of what happened at this year's NAMPO show, the massive agricultural exhibition that takes place annually in the Free State. Look out for it this weekend on Ignition. Until next time, from the Focus on Transport team, keep on tracking. You've been watching Motor Trends, Focus on Transport, bringing you a look at the automotive industry through the eyes of its leaders. This edition was brought to you by MAN Truck and Bus South Africa, C-Track and Engine. Motor Trends, bringing you a different perspective on the automotive industry. In this edition, Nampo, brought to you by Focus on Transport magazine, Ford Motor Company of Southern Africa and GWM South Africa. Nampo is the largest show of farming equipment and livestock in the Southern Hemisphere and not somewhere you'd normally find the Ignition team. But if you consider that a good majority of your food is transported via trucks and long haulers across the country every day, suddenly motoring has a huge impact on the agricultural industry. It's about 46 years ago that the people started getting together and I think that day it was like 200 farmers that got uh, together and they would start looking at how to compare you know, the different inputs and input suppliers to each other. And it has grown to, to what we have today, like four days, we expect in the vicinity of about, you know, just over 70,000 people. There's just over 600 exhibitors here. And then we also bring in, you know, support services like the transport industry to bring all of those things together. Let the farmers look at it, maybe explore going into, uh, you know, value adding businesses. I think about 30% of all food cost in South Africa is transport cost. And we need to try and bring that down to make it more affordable to a lot of people in South Africa. The agricultural sector is an important area for truck manufacturers. MAN Truck and Bus has estimated that around 15% of national sales come from the farming community. This has resulted in OEMs focusing on making vehicles with longer lifespans and better consumption figures. The agricultural sector has been, um, has been pretty flat. Um, typically a farmer will keep a vehicle for 20 years. I believe one of the biggest challenges for us as, as an international OEM is really the, the rate of exchange at the moment. Um, it has a big impact on the market. We have a comprehensive 4x4 um, range and um, then of course we have our TGS uh, with the, the high uh, ground clearance and of course the TGM and the CLA which is our budget product and then also the VW which is a new it's a new model to our, our fold, but doing very well in the farmer's uh, market as well. Trucks and long haulers are one thing, but one image we all have when we think of farmers is Feldschooner, Khaki and a trusty Bucky. And there definitely was plenty of four-wheel steeds around the showgrounds at Nampo, including a recent entry to the field who has given old contenders a run for their money and is possibly going to make large inroads into the single cab segment. Well, the range has done fantastically well for Ford since we launched it uh, approximately a year ago. Um, we've seen record sales for Ranger. For 2012, we, sh we sold around 16,000 Rangers in, in South Africa. And last month, we sold 1,700 odd Rangers. We were the market leaders in 4x4 double cabs last year. As we move into this year, we will start focusing on the single cab range and more of the fleet business and workhorse environment. And there were plenty of vehicles catering to the not-so-rough-and-tumble side of farming. With wives and kids in abundance at the show, manufacturers were also keen to show off their range of SUVs and MPVs. Chinese manufacturer GWM was out in force showing off its H5 SUV. For the busy mom, this five-seater comes with leather seats and a six-speaker touchscreen DVD entertainment system to keep the kids occupied. Ford was also showing off its latest offering, the Transit. The Transit comes in two variations, one for people and one for goods, and a variety of derivatives were on offer. But looks aren't the primary focus at a place like Nampo. 
Bucky's and workhorses are only as good as their load-bearing capabilities, and there's no greater test than lining them up one after the other to take on a mammoth off-road track. The public goes to the exhibitors and they go and request a demonstration drive where they complete an indemnity uh, application and then the, the manufacturers do take them through on the demonstration drive. Well, we've had a couple of screams, uh, especially on the, on, the, on the side slope, uh, but yes, uh, we must be very careful that we don't create a merry-go-round uh, effect and that, that, that we really get the guys that's interested in the vehicles to do it because it's, it's, it's quite thrilling. As fun as it all seems, the off-road track actually had quite a serious goal for the day. In the past on exhibitions there was incidents. Uh, we've had incidents here. The 4x4 industry is busy with regulation and we are using this as a guinea pig uh, to form regulation, rules and regulation for exhibition drives. Uh, so Nampu is basically the benchmark where we started. Nampo has over 600 exhibitors vying for the crowd's attention and some savvy businessmen have used some special gimmicks to attract consumers. Here at Nampo, uh, the people who can make the most noise, uh, they draw the most attention. So we fitted a V8 petrol engine with open exhausts so that we can make a noise hoping that the people will come and have a look more at the front end loader than the tractor. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. The tractor is a veteran, a 1975 model, and she was polished up to display the front end loader. So the accents should be on the front end loader and not on the tractor. But I think I shot myself in the foot because there are more people wanting to buy the tractor than people wanting to buy the front end loaders. But it's not only about the engine, it's also how looks outdo the next persons. It was half a 80 series Land Cruiser, and the other half is a Chef C50 chassis. So all the diffs and the undercarriage is Chef C50. It's got a 454 big block Chevy, 7.5 litres with a 671 supercharger to dominate the Hollies, and it makes a good 600 clear horses as it stands there. If you look at the tyres and you look at the suspension, that's who we are. We're also TJM, we're the sole importers of TJM. Full suspensions for most of the four-wheel drives that run on the South African roads and what they do. Well, let's start it up and see how many, how many bees will come to the, to the nest. Regardless of what you were looking for at this year's show, there was a multitude of things to see and do. Even the wives seemed pretty impressed. Wonderlijk, absoluut wonderlijk. Ik moet sê, in al my jare is dit my eerste keer hier, maar ek was nog nie eers by die sale vandag nie. So as jylle wil kyk wat hier is, as jylle wil sien wat hier is, kom beleef, daar is soveel in hierdie stuk grond om te sien. I think it's great, uh, a lot of people, um, but everything, everything's fine. There's more stuff than last year. Uh, it's enjoyable. It's this one with tractors because I'm, 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 I'm fond of farming and, and uh, cars as well. We are the Isuzu Staliki, the best bakkie that we've ever built. And then we're the landbouw toerusting, implementen and the best in all the dieren. The best in Namposkou. And I believe Namposkou is going to be bigger. And they see us every year. This Motor Trend snippet was brought to you by Focus on Transport magazine, Ford Motor Company of Southern Africa and GWM South Africa.